Okay. Well, hey everyone, Ross Marchand here with the Taxpayers Protection Alliance, and I'm joined today on this very dreary, sad looking outside quarantine day by none other <laughs> than Center for Individual Freedom's own Tim Lee. Tim, how are you doing today? We're doing well, and I don't mean to rub this in, but uh, here in Arizona, it's not quite as dreary, so if you, you need a getaway, you know, you not want to hop on a plane, but you can drive all the way out here. It only takes a couple days, and you're welcome to join us. That sounds like an apocalypse movie. I'm just like, I'm driving out with an RV, like somewhere out into the middle of the desert, but I don't, I feel like the weather is probably a little bit better out here, because I'm, I'm just looking outside, and just it's all rain and cloud cover, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, now you've planted that seed in my head of the film, The Hills Have Eyes. I promise you it's nothing like that. Oh, uh, no, this is like a terrible sequel in the works. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you bring Dave Williams. Uh, of course, yeah, no, he'll be the first to die in any horror movie, naturally. naturally. <laughs> He's not going to watch this, right? <laughs> um, oh, oh, he will, he will, and the rest of the world is going to watch it, too. So behave yourself. Dave. He said it. I didn't say it. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> so talking today about intellectual property and the coronavirus, because it seems like right now there's a mad dash. There's a mad scramble to get these drugs to market um, that could be vaccines to prevent coronavirus from spreading to begin with, to treat people who already have the deadly disease. Uh, so Tim, do you mind talking a little bit about that and the role that intellectual property plays in developing these life-saving drugs? Absolutely. Great question. So we'll start from the general and go to the more specific. Um, the United States accounts for about 4% of the world's population. We've got the biggest and most prosperous economy in the world, but even that accounts for about 24% of the global economy. But think about this. The United States accounts for about two-thirds of all new drugs introduced in the world. That's an amazing statistic. I mean, that's almost critical our economy, which is already the world's biggest. Now, you ask yourself, is that coincidence? Or does that have something to do with the policies that we've chosen through the years? I think the next closest was Japan at like 12% or something like that. I think all of Europe is made 20%, um, somewhere around there. So obviously the United States is something. And what is that thing that we're doing right? The first thing that comes to mind is intellectual property protections. Now, intellectual property covers copyright, trademark, trade secret, but also patent, which is what the drug companies and pharmaceuticals and healthcare providers use when they're creating these new drugs and improving existing drugs. And so when you have those strong intellectual property rights, that creates an incentive to create. And that, more than anything else, explains why we lead the world by far in terms of pharmaceutical innovation through the years. Now, at the current moment with the coronavirus, that's more important than ever. What we want is innovation. Nobody innovates like the United States, and that's because of strong patent protections. Put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's a medical innovator. You want to be able to know that the billions and billions of dollars that you're investing in these drugs and these ideas that may become life-saving or life-improving drugs that you'll be able to have the payoff at the end, the, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Not only is that fair, but it also incentivizes people on a sort of utilitarian basis. And so the two combined, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln, he was a patent attorney, and he essentially said that patent rights fuel the fire of American genius. And so that has occurred throughout our history and that's even more important today. So, you know, you look across the world and innovators in every country are trying to address the coronavirus uh, pandemic, but most likely a lot of these innovations are gonna come from the United States and that's because of strong patent protections. So all you have to do is look at the results through the years. Patent rights have led to all of this American innovation and it's happening today and if anything, we need to enhance those patent protections to create even more incentives uh, for a lot of these pharmaceutical innovators because most likely they're going to be the ones that uh, help create vaccines and other treatments worldwide. So let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's make things even better, actually. 
Sure, absolutely. And sometimes it's easier said than done, especially in this frenzied legislative environment. It seems like we have three relief packages. So two have already been passed in recent weeks, and this third one is about to be passed. Um, and we'll probably have more on the way soon. So it seems like lawmakers are really scrambling to make sure they have their priorities in order. Um, but what sort of priority can lawmakers afford to intellectual property protection for some of these drugs, for some of these life-saving drugs? And what are some of the reforms that, um, that Congress could put in place right now to make sure that some of these drugs get developed and that, that manufacturers have an incentive to bring these drugs to market? Sure. For some time now, there's been a movement in Congress to restrict improvements on existing drugs. So if you just watch the news with regard to coronavirus, you'll hear about potential new treatments or vaccines that sort of stem from existing treatments. I don't take a position on this. I'm not a physician, but one example is malaria drugs that some people think, well, this shows promise. People have been treated with it, made it better, or other drugs that currently exist. Now, Unfortunately, there's been a movement in Congress for some time now to restrict patent rights for medical innovators who have an existing drug but are investing new dollars in saying, hey, you know what, maybe we can tweak this a little bit to instead of handling malaria, let's handle coronavirus. Or maybe this will have fewer side effects than the existing drug. What we need to be able to do and what Congress and the White House need to encourage is for innovators to have patent rights so that they do want to invest in those things because a lot of these drugs may already exist, they just need a few tweaks here and there. And the best way to improve upon them and to create that incentive that we talked about a moment ago is to enhance those patent rights. Unfortunately, some in Congress want to target that and they want to create presumptions against patent rights for improvements to existing drugs. That's the exact opposite of what we need to be doing right now. And so the best thing that Congress can do is to enhance the incentives through patent rights for pharmaceutical innovators to create improvements to existing drugs rather than going forward, create these presumptions against patentable rights. Um, for these improvements to the to those drugs, so that's number one right now. We wrote about that a couple of weeks ago at CFYF, and you know, for anybody interested, take a look at that because we get into the um, some of the details of legislation that was proposed earlier. But the first thing we should do is enhance the ability of innovators to gain patent rights for improvements to existing drugs because people are talking about that already. How that might be one of the best ways to attack coronavirus. Sure, and your organization's been in the forefront of producing great timely content on stuff like this. What is your website so people can check out uh, some of this material and read all about um, intellectual property rights and, and, and how to leverage those rights to fight coronavirus? Well, that's very kind of you to say, but I, I'll say that uh, TPA has, has also been a great leader on this. So you guys are just invaluable in this movement as well. Um, but uh, the website is really simple. It's CFIF, that stands for Center for Individual Freedom, CFIF.org. All right, well, thank you so much. And you could see our content on this and many other issues related to coronavirus and other pressing public policy issues at protectingtaxpayers.org. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Um, stay healthy, stay safe, and, and stay sane. Thanks. You guys are doing great work and appreciate your leadership on this. Thank you. Thanks. Likewise. Take care.